I'm Michael Truly. Tonight on Master Debaters, we take a good hard look at Best Picture nominee, Gravity. Only one of these men will be right. <laughs> on my left is Mark Petro, a man who hated gravity so much he's determined to float for the rest of his life. On my right is a man who shouldn't have been allowed back, except his unabiding love for gravity is the purest love unhindered by human concepts of what is right or wrong. Also, he double-checked he had the correct movie, Chris Lagars. We are doing Tyler Perry's uh, Medea in Space, is that correct? Medea in Space is coming, I know it. Uh, okay, Mark, you have 10 seconds to tell us who you are and why your opinion matters. Okay, I'm Go. Mark, I'm a nerd. Uh, my parents are both scientists. I can do this, that makes me look smarter. It's a good look. And I'm literally the devil's advocate. Time. Chris, you have 10 seconds to tell us who you are and why your opinion matters. Um, I'm an editor, cinematographer. Uh, in my entire career, all I've done is analyze film. I have two degrees in it, one in theory, one in production. I've done things for Fox, ABC, Comedy Central, Nike, Time. ESPN. 60 seconds to support your opinion with fact. I have my qualms with the Academy. Uh, I thought Crash was one of the most pathetic, boring uh, movies, and it won best. So I don't always line up with most critics. But I do pay notice when 97% of people enjoyed this that were critics. 91% of the same audience went into this movie and came out with something more from it. It also pulled in $676 million box office. That's, that's insane. You're, you're talking about something that hit on both levels. And as far as 2013 goes, Gravity is will be remembered as the movie of 2013. So it, it seems like we're not debating if it's good, we're debating the fact that you have an opinion that's an anomaly, okay? It, this isn't a debate, this is an intervention. Time. You have 60 seconds to support your opinion with facts. All right. Are you ready? So while I appreciate what this has done for the genre of science fiction, and the visuals are stunning, the actors' performances were amazing, and the sound design was just incredible, the story's where I got a big beef. It's can be removed from the movie, and the movie would have been better, in my opinion. The entire character arc happens in one excruciating long scene. Then her background, where she designed this thing, so now she's qualified to do a spacewalk. All these little things that they did to get the plot to be where they wanted it to be, rather than where the story was leading them to be, you've got her already dealing with actual trauma immediately in front of her. You got her dealing with oxygen deprivation. There's enough there for an actor to chew on, aside from this bizarre backstory of- Aside from some dead baby. It ends up just being a big dead baby joke. Time. So, Chris, you now have 60 seconds for a rebuttal. Okay. Are you ready? Mm, yeah. Go. Um, so you're debating the simplistic story of it, and you say that there's an absence of story. We've demanded too much as an audience of overcomplicated twists and plots and an abundance of character and loud noises. Uh, Dark Knight Rises is a great example of this. Who is where doing what and who cares with underdeveloped characters. And what this film is doing is it's isolating you with one person that you can relate to. It, it's a profundity on the human endeavor to survive uh, under uh, circumstances that are unbelievable. Her, her main debate in the film is, should I get home and why should I get home when I have nothing else to come back to? You're only seeing the iceberg of the story and it's what you take away from it that I feel like you may have missed Time. on this one. Uh, I, I wanna be clear, I'm not saying that this story is too simplistic, I love simple stories. That story was shoehorned right in the middle of the movie. We don't know about that at the top of the movie. So I don't care that her life's work just disintegrated right before her. I was on George Clooney's journey through that whole thing. I have to admit, that does sound like a fun journey. It, it would it's be It's just a like great drinking journey. beers in space yeah, and like floating around and being like, I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt <laughs> underneath this Listening thing. Listening to country music. <laughs> He'd bail on you though. He'd be like, I gotta go, I gotta split. You gotta be all right? <laughs> I had this thing with my old lady. Did I not tell you about that? <laughs> you have 15 seconds to tell me how you'd improve the movie or wax poetic about how perfect it is. Go. All right. Go. Jesus. You get the thing? Yep. Uh, usually I'm pretty good at telling you how to make uh, certain attri attributes of something better. I, I'm not in the position necessarily to critique this film. Um, I don't f with art, and this is a piece of art. The editing and the film camera work and everything is all woven together. It's a ballet. It's a, it's a Newtonian ballet. And if you pull out one piece, you're gonna, you're gonna screw up the entire fluidity of it. Because Time. it's- Time. I wouldn't f with it. Okay, 
15 seconds to tell me how you'd improve the movie or wax poetic about how perfect it is. Go. Well, one, I wouldn't say it's perfect. And I'd say it's kind of, it's, it's close to heart. That's the frustrating part about it. It's so close to being this perfect movie. It doesn't pull me in emotionally, and that is what prevents it from me considering it art. It's like looking at like a, a Picasso and then suddenly there's this hyper real picture of a dead baby. You know, it's like looking at that, I'd be like, all right, maybe if you take out the dead baby Picasso, like. Nobody it, tells Picasso to take out the dead baby's time. Well, I think you went into it like with such an intensity and a passion for it to be absolutely perfect because this was going to be What I'm passionate so about is not so much the physics of it, not so much the math of it, what it, because that's all, that is superfluous to uh -huh. a film. Like, because you get the Avengers and they're flying all over yeah, the place. Yeah, Looney Tunes. You get, you know, that's like, why I like Star this. Wars. That, that's why I like this, though, is because <laughs> it, it wasn't, it's still grounded in reality, yet being a technical achievement. It's not like right. Avatar was like bright colors and loud crap everywhere. It's something, it's like, oh, you made a movie about someone not being able to stop and not be able to breathe. What I'm ex usually excited for with a movie like this is seeing somebody pick up the mantle that is so often dropped of great science fiction. Science fiction has a very specific purpose in the literary realm and in the film realm of discussing topics that can't normally be discussed in a normal setting. He didn't really deal with that. There was no like dealing with grief. She just dealt with it in one scene that could have been cut out and the movie would have been very similar. Okay, Chris, uh, a few points that you made. Audience pleasing, pleasing with a with a apostrophe in Newtonian ballet, loud crap everywhere. Uh, Mark, some of the points that you made were panic attacks. Are you okay? Right now. Okay. Uh, could we have replaced Sandra Bullock with a dog? Uh, actors shouldn't chew babies. Definitely agree with you on that one. That's all for us here on Master Debaters. I want to thank Chris Lagars and Mark Petro for coming in. You can check out more Master Debaters next Thursday. We are every Thursday uh, until one of us dies. Probably me because I don't eat well. Let us know what you think of Gravity below, uh, or uh, let us know who you think won. Was it Mark with his uh, science-based arguments, or was it Chris with the, uh, the appeal to the artistic merits uh, of the human soul? Let us know below. We want to hear it. We'll chime in as well. We'll see you next week.